Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd here at Halid RV of Coldwater, Michigan, which is a just a stone cold stunning gorgeous 5465 pound rockwood 2509s landing here updating some winter footage today we've done a video of one of these before it was a customer's personal order it was not necessarily exactly the way that we tend to carry them here at halo rv not that there was anything wrong with it by any means um this is our general target stocking build right here but kind of like you might have seen in that previous video and if you'd like to see maybe a, some different things that you could get on a mini light i'll leave you a link to that video down in the description but cruise through this take a look through it watch that other video let me know what features about both you like and would prefer if you were getting into one of these this is a brilliant model because it gives us like basically you're getting a 32 foot camper smashed down into about a 26 foot box and that is the beauty and the genius and the magic of a murphy bed and frankly for my money and i say this unapologetically we carry other brands that do murphy beds for my money nobody does murphy's better than rockwood Frankly, there's a lot of things I don't think anyone does anything better than Rockwood, but Murphy Beds is most certainly one of those. Now, when you first walk in the door, this is pretty much what you're gonna see right here. I'm gonna give you a slow spin 360, kind of set up a lay of the land here uh, before we get dove into any specific details. You might notice that vaulted ceiling and the double ducted uh, air conditioning that goes on in here. That's pretty much Rockwood doing Rockwood things. Even in a smaller model like this, they will still centralize the air to give you that uh, just superior airflow, basically. And you might have noticed that is a Coleman Quieter air conditioner. We will very often upgrade those to a larger 15,000 BTU here at Halid RV as well. Now, straight across from the dinette or lounge or whatever you want it to be, you've got some good campsite window coverage, not to mention that unconventionally located, but now suddenly copied by other manufacturers, entertainment center up there. So when it is mealtime over here, if it's a rainy day, you got to keep the kiddos occupied, you got a perfect little space to do that. But up front here, this is really the business area of the camper. Because this area of the RV basically does everything. First of all, it's just a nice open sofa. And if you notice, you get the big dinette and the sofa of a super slide RV without the length and the cost of a super slide RV. Something like this with double bunks, uh, if it had a super slide and a front bed, it would probably be 32 feet. It would certainly weigh and cost a whole lot more. That's what makes this RV so good. You don't compare it to other like 25 foot trailers you compare it to 32 foot trailers that's the benefit of this kind of floor plan you've got the cool little fold down console here you got a couple little cup holders these are called incliners when the back doesn't recline just the feet kick out it's called an incliner but i don't know for movie day and you'll see that the tv pivots around this is still not too bad little pro tip with these you actually kind of pull in with your legs you don't just push down now of course you're kind of wondering and we'll see this in more detail but there is storage under here um, you'll kind of spot that as you're folding it down into Murphy mode and in real time this is all it takes and you got to make sure you put that little shove in there because that will activate the little safety lock down here so that you can see it won't like if you lay down up here it's not gonna lawn chair you in this thing now let me kick my shoes off real quick because the weather's decent just to give you an idea of the size of this right here this is a camp queen so I'm about 6'3 or something like that. If I lay down and not clock my head on the headboard, let's see. You know, there's space above my head here. This is reasonable for pillow height. Yeah, you can see my feet are hanging off the bed down here with my cheap little, well, actually, these are my nice Under Armour socks, not my cheap Walmart socks. Moving on up. <laughs> and if you sleep on your back, maybe this doesn't work for you. It doesn't bother me. I'm camping. I'm okay with that. But here's the thing. I don't tend to sleep like that you know when i sleep i am a side sleeper well magically my feet fit on the bed now that's why camp queens work for a lot more people than i think they realize now this side of the bed is always very organic to me i always tell my wife i'm gonna sleep between uh, her and the door in case somebody comes through that door i'm gonna give her a fighting chance of getting out of here that ain't in at all guys if uh if there's a fire i'm out no i'm joking <laughs> So putting this away is just as easy. Pull the little uh, pinball wizard safety system down here. You've got a bullet latch on both sides. That's what these are called, bullet latches. Now this right here, pull up until it stops, then pull on the back, and voila, it drops right down into place. 
And if you do need some privacy, you got yourself a little curtain so that you're not putting on a shadow puppet theater. Now, a couple more quick notes on this before we fully put it away. It's a one-piece mattress. You notice I didn't have to fold and remake the bed. I've opened it and closed it several times now. You can stuff your pillows under those straps so they're not going anywhere. And you've got the headboard up here, which is going to be good for your phones or potentially CPAP machines. That is also one of the reasons that they put a, uh, a set of household outlets right up there just in case you need something to keep those guys charged up. Now a quick pass through all the storage here. Um, another thing about these Murphy beds, the way this works, the under the sofa space, that is the pass-through space under the bed itself from the exterior of the RV. So when we see that from the outside, remember, you've already seen it once. I'm not trying to trick you and double dip on any of this stuff. And I like how you've got the normal hanging closets and dresser drawers on both sides of the bed. But over here, they extended the slide uh, to incorporate and include this extra pantry space, but these shelves are removable and that can be extra hanging closet space which in a bunkhouse like this depending on what you're packing and how you're camping may prove to be very beneficial that table's totally free floating and look at the extra like the plywood uh backers that they're putting on the the elliptical base table legs here so that you're not just ripping screws out of raw particle board or anything like that now if you choose to utilize that closet pantry as a closet you still maintain a normal pantry and you might notice it, it's weird. It's weird that they do this. I actually don't like this. I hope you appreciate the fact I'm even willing to share things I don't like about campers. I don't like that they use the very nice raised panel hardwood cabinet doors, but they flip them around backwards to give you that shaker style look. I get that this is very neat and trendy, but the whole point to me of a raised panel hardwood door is to get to see the curvature and the character. I guess if it really bothers me that badly, I could always flip it around. Now, a neat thing here, uh, that dinette is a full aluminum base. Anything Rockwood builds in-house, if it supports weight or is structural, it's going to be an aluminum build. Now, you see the countertop extension? They need to make that flip up and down because when the slide closes, and you'll get to see the slide close in a few minutes, it would kind of start crushing stuff. That's all solid surface, by the way. I've got that uh, sink cover out of the way so you can see the stainless. And the little pop-up power tower, I like that it's out, in, out of the way. It's in the corner. And these are inch and a half laminated walls, so they don't really fit uh, a normal household receptacle. So this gives us easy reach outlets where we need it. And I like the uh, the sticker up here. Every time I think of it, I always think of it looking at me and going, Push me! Push me, bro! I don't know. That's just me. I'm weird like that. Um... <laughs> We'll come back to the uh, television setup in a second. Microwave, pretty standard stuff. That is an actual heat exhausting vent hood. The 12 volt compressor fridge is an optional piece of equipment that we're looking at here. It gives us uh, a little over 25% more cold storage capacity. It is faster cooling. It's a compressor driven fridge. It's 12 volt, so it's travel safe. It's not uh, a potential fire breather or anything like that. There's a lot of really cool, good things that it's doing for us. Now, another thing, Rockwood puts a full window in the entry door, but they actually include the privacy shade. And I stress that because like almost nobody does. All of these other windows have shades. That's a full viewing, not even frosty glass, a full viewing window. At night, if your lights are on inside, people are gonna see right through that thing. Rockwood includes the shade because it needs to be there. It blows my mind that more brands do not. If you appreciate that, uh, hit the like button on the video, leave a little comment that says, hey, good job, Rockwood. And just, just a thought, that's a free floating table. Nothing says it has to only sit right there. And earlier I referred to this very strategically, mind you, as a lounge, not necessarily just a dinette. So if you've got a bunch of friends over, you can take the table outside. You can use it for picnic time. You can do all kinds of different things like it. On a rainy day, you got to get everybody inside. You got to keep everybody entertained. Maybe it's football time or something like that. Well, yeah, I mean, doesn't matter where you sit. Everybody can get a pretty good shot at the TV. There's seating for a ton of people in here, given the small size of the RV. And then you just fold your bed down. It's bedtime. Everybody crashes and everybody's good to go. By the way, I don't talk about this very often, but every single air vent on these can turn and close individually. And this is called a, a cold air dump. If you flip that open, like 70% of your air drops right here. And then when you're ready, you flip that shut and it'll start running the uh, air back through the air ducts. A common question people have, 
why is that slotted up there? And it's not because they don't know how to like cut a door to the appropriate size or how to close that off. It actually has to do with two main factors. The first of which is the air conditioner. This style of air conditioner basically needs return airflow to be able to come out of that room to push air into it effectively. So that is making sure that your bathroom doesn't turn into a sweltering swamp mess inside of there. The other thing is, oh, the little flappy doodle 9000 series. You have to hit it twice. It's the law, guys. But the other thing is, if I crack this door open, you can see that they're using one of those big extra large vent fans up here. That thing can give you whole house airflow. Rockwood uses those very smexy looking uh, frameless windows. They don't get as much airflow. That fan helps overcome potential, potential, whatever, we're doing it live, potential airflow loss as a result of those frameless windows. Heat, like all of the hot air that I'm billowing out of my face right now, rises. It forms a thermal blanket in the roof and it gets sucked out of here. So you can maintain bathroom privacy while still getting the good in-house airflow. Now that is way too tall for somebody to be peeking over the top of there to see something. And chances are, if somebody's in the RV, it's somebody that you know. It's not like you got a creepy Norman Bates stranger ri ripping open the shower curtain to really stab you and scare you and freak you out, man. So a better look at the bathroom. <clears throat> We're gonna just hard pivot off of the uh, the slasher film face there. Big XL Van fan, standard, always, always in Rockwood travel trailer and fifth wheel bathrooms, which naturally comes with the roof vent cover to go with it. Now, uh, this is a six and a half foot sidewall, which means my head does need to be in the bubble, but this RV does have a vaulted ceiling and it does have that skylight at a really optimal position against the wall at like the shortest height area. So I can always stand in here, not an issue. You've got the uh, little shower soap caddy in there because those little corner shelves are, they're not, I've said it before, they're not even good for shower beers. The Aquaview Shower Miser, which if you're waiting for your water to heat up and you're boondocking, you don't want to use this if you are um, uh, in the parks. Basically, it will reroute the water into your fresh holding tank so that once the water finally warms up, this is actually temperature sensitive. This will turn from blue to like white and congratulations. Now you know your shower temperature is ready. Now I'd love some input on this. This is a bunk model. So a tub kind of makes sense. Sometimes you got littles in here uh, or a dog or something like that. I know a lot of people prefer a shower though. What do you guys think about that? What would your preference be? Right next to that porcelain foot flush stool, a nicer feature with surprisingly good leg room in here, even for a long legged person like me. And we've got the window over here for some extra light that does not open for airflow. I don't think it really needs to. And we've already established that you've got the hair sucker offer fan up top here. I don't know if you've seen my face. You did a second ago. You can see that I don't have hair. It might be because of those fans. It might not be. It might just be genetics. I'm not really sure. I haven't done the science behind it to figure it out. Okay, I'm not a science man. Now it takes a little bit of extra time and effort for me to close the slides up like this. And sometimes, kind of like in the case of this RV, it's not always purely positive information that I have to report. For instance, you you cannot use the, uh, the Murphy bed when the slide is closed. When they added that extra closet right there and they extended the slide forward, it does limit this one's travel functionality, but it obviously improves it for destination use. And in case you're wondering, no, unfortunately, the jackknife sofa also uh, remains unusable while you're in transit. Now, at a glance, a lot of people are going to look at this and say, yeah, this, the, uh, dang it, I cannot get through it. Now, there's a couple different things you could do here. If you don't mind doing the watermelon crawl on your knees, you can actually just knee crawl around that thing. But this floor plan actually, the way Rockwood does their dinettes, there's another way around that. The way Rockwood does this table, the little runners that hold it in place when you're sleeping can also hold it in place in transit so it's not going to go anywhere. So then you can just step your way right through here and move on through to the bathroom, to the bunks. Now you see I've got that uh, bunk folded up into cargo mode right now. Again, looking at it in transit mode, I suspect that for traveling, that is how more people are going to use it and then flip it down when you get to your destination. But again, I can see it being used a number of different ways. Something else I noticed, I, I must have missed this either in previous generations or this is new, a switch for these upper lights. Now, 
This one you can reach, or at least I can, I'm tall. That one you gotta crawl into the bunk. And mom and dad, grandpa and grandma, whoever, you lose control of that bed. So having a switch back here, I thought was a really, really cool thing. Then obviously, you know, our bathroom is right here. It's available uh, That yeah, once you get past the slide again. Now, uh, a question a lot of people have is, yeah, but are you supposed to step on the slide like that when it's retracted? You want to do as little of it as possible. You certainly, uh, you don't want to like get in here, jump off the top rope, with the people's elbow and do a p -p -p power slam on this thing or nothing like that. But for just a quick step through, you're fine. And we will actually come back to this big power awning space in just a little bit. If you're looking at that, they put the biggest awning on it they possibly could have. Any further forward, it would have been fighting with the baggage door, which uh, I don't think you'd want to give up your uh, outside storage that goes below the sofa. Uh, we're looking at the white exterior option. Uh, standard on these would be a champagne exterior color with a uh, like dark chocolate nose cap. And it looks good. It looks like a Rockwood. But there's something about this package, especially, look at that beautiful blue sky. It looks and feels just like a, a GeoPro on steroids. This is like if a 20 BHS uh, went to graduate school and then started working on a postdoctorate degree. Like this is above and beyond. But it's got all the normal Rockwood things like this is an all aluminum skeleton product. The uh, front, rear, side, and roof are all vacuum laminated. And that's an interesting thing. Very few manufacturers will laminate behind a nose cap. Rockwood still does. Another thing you're not seeing behind that nose cap is a full radiant barrier. Uh, it starts all the way up top, and by the way, you'll see when we get up to the roof, that nose cap sleeves about six inches over the roof line, so it's a sleeve over nose. And then the radiant barrier goes all the way down, even behind the diamond plate back here behind the power jack, 30 pound propane tanks, not 20s like most people. You see the handy little uh, plug buddy so that your uh, plug and your chains are just sitting in the dirt, you know, just little detail things like that are, are, are what separates Rockwood. Now, they ship a big giant but empty battery box we include your first 12 volt battery here at halo rv and we've got all kinds of upgrade options if you're looking for agms or lithiums and all sorts of things another option we've applied to this one uh would be that uh slide awning package right there just you know keeping the sunshine off the slide helping you stay cool inside and if you're camping in an area that has a lot of like pine trees and sticks and crap that likes to fall on the camper it's nice that that stuff doesn't get up in the slide seals we saw all sorts of creative storage on the inside. That trend ain't gonna change whatsoever now that we're out here. This goes all the way under that sofa. Now you notice it was a, well, actually you haven't seen that yet, I'm sorry. I, sometimes I record these segments out of order and I forget you haven't seen what I've seen. It's like this weird time loop, you know, uh, conundrum like you find in a movie. You will see on the other side, you have to dogleg left a little bit to get to the storage under the sofa, but it's, it's there, it's better than nothing. Underneath the dinette, I told you how it's an all aluminum skeleton and I can talk about it, but there's something about seeing that welded aluminum cage work on here and the fact that they're giving us a baggage door so that you don't have to rip apart half the dinette just to get to the storage is nice. And behind that combination pantry uh, closet area, you've got what I like to call the endoscope storage because it looks like you're taking a, uh, a trip up the uh, lower GI section of some uh, poor unwilling victim. But uh, you know, folding chairs, uh, a random golf club, we'll say, for campsite security. <laughs> My wife calls it the husband motivator. Uh, obviously, we keep one golf club. Actually, I don't even know where that golf club came from because neither of us own golf clubs. I think we might have gone mini putting one time and my daughter may have actually kept the club. I don't know. I'm not sure. <laughs> I just know my wife threatens me with it every now and then, and rightfully so. Full outside utility shower with hot and cold. Black tank flush. All of our little hookups kind of just very nicely, cleanly condensed uh, right above our sewer hookup station here. Now, this is the standard Goodyear tire package. One of the options that a lot of people don't know very much about on a Rockwood Mini Light is the Sport Tire and Wheel Package. I'm not gonna call it an off-road package. I don't think it converts us to a true off-road adventure camper. But what it entails is you upgrade to 15-inch wheels, you gain Westlake knobby radials, which just look beefy and cool. Um, you also gain a two and five eighths inch axle riser kit. So effectively what you're doing is you're putting a little bit larger tire on the RV and giving yourself about three inches of extra ground clearance. And 
that is a very nice thing. Actually, there's definitely some uh, statistics to support the idea that larger tires are more reliable when you're going down the road, but I don't think anyone's gonna say that the Goodyear's they're riding on here are inferior by any means. Cause that is some prime patio party positioning right there, people. Woohoo! A lot of alliteration going on. They put the biggest awning on this they possibly could. Of course, it's a power awning. Rockwood uses a faster moving awning. There's LED lights at the base that could. I knew I'd forget to do that. I forgot to turn on. Now, if you listen closely, you can hear that I like to add nonsense sound effects to my videos because I'm kind of a big child that way. But what I'm demonstrating is that this has easy tilt awning arms. That's a Lippert Solera awning, which by the way is like one of the only awnings that can be uh, replaced and repaired piecewise, as opposed to like basically replacing the entire awning. God forbid something happens, each individual component can effectively be swapped out. Not every awning is built that way. And if you leave it cranked, don't worry about it. Like maybe uh, one of the kids, let's say one of the kids uh, grabbed this and pulled it down. Or uh, let's say you, you had some like, you were you were doing some fly fishing and you had some heavy wader boots and it, it uh, pulled this arm down. When you close the awning, it will sort itself out. But here's a pro tip. I got bit by one of these once. Don't push up with your hand right here. You can pull it down easy with one hand. When you're putting it back up, one hand here, one hand here. Otherwise you end up with what looks like a Pac-Man chomp taken out of your your hand right there. Trust me on that one. That's a pro tip from your Uncle Josh, the RV nerd. Um, over here, our little mini camp kitchen has evolved over the years. Uh, it has a hot and cold outside hookup, which can be used either, uh, like if you have a little wash basin that you bring with you, or you could use it to like hose the kids or the dog or something off. There is a gas grill quick connect down below that propane stove. And then you notice how there's two white little flags hanging out down there. This has two gas grill quick connects left cooker hooker for the, the the for your side dishes the right cooker hooker for the accompanying griddle system that comes over here that is included on these also includes its handy little uh side shelf utility table so that you got a place to set your platter and your tongs now that tv inside if you want to it can dismount and go on that bracket right there so you can have some serious indoor outdoor entertainment action and of course dad's medicine cabinet over here giving us a place to store the bottled water and the barley pop also cuts down on a ton of dirty foot traffic going through the camper now as long as we're standing over here seems appropriate to talk about the goodyear endurance radials standard factory tire pressure monitoring system and the lack of leaf springs this is a torsion suspension system not just torsion axles the wheels essentially pretty much move independently which is kind of neat the uh steps right here they are the zero gravity variety that you don't have to throw your shoulder out to get flipped up either i think i'm gonna start calling them the more ride magic steps though magic step that's got a good sound magic steps because he just floats in midair like magic there's a gas strut that makes lifting and lowering this easy actually i have to hold it otherwise the recoil will cause it to completely close now I wanted to do this gently on purpose to demonstrate for you that to do this properly, you need to make sure that the door is completely open, which requires me to push the door with my foot while holding the camera with one hand and the stairs with the other hand. Because I wanted to show you how that is an anti-slam entry door. It doesn't just go whack against the side of the RV. Magnet holdbacks for the baggage doors, simple side mount solar prep plug. While we're talking about solar stuff, I want you to remember that little plug there. We're gonna get back to solar in just a minute on the roof. That doesn't make sense how I phrase that. While we're talking about solar stuff, we're gonna not talk about solar stuff. <sighs> it's got magic steps, solar stuff. We're not gonna talk about until we do. I don't even, why do you folks even watch me? Ahem, <laughs> solar stuff, okay. So when you get the 12 volt fridge, you automatically get a 190 watt go power raised panel, high efficiency roof solar package, 30 amp charge controller and 1000 watt inverter that can live power off your battery, multiple outlets through the RV in different areas. So uh, if you're a CPAP user, you're off grid camping, you need to run a coffee machine basically, you can do some things like that. Now there is a factory option to double that and get an additional 190 watt panel Plus, there was that portable panel prep that you saw, and a portable panel has its own built-in charge controller, so they are compatible to work with one another. Long story short, you could have nearly, if you wanted, 500 watts of solar on this thing without ever 
changing a single thing from the factory. And by the way, you see how this has the single panel on it. You could add a second panel after this. No big deal. It doesn't require any major modifications. Now this is a laminated roof, which means we don't have a bunch of screws and staples and fasteners that could potentially wiggle loose and poke a hole from the bottom up through our roof membrane, which I'm not trying to throw darts at anybody else. That is how a non-laminated roof, that is a potential concern. It's a low occurrence item, but it is theoretically something that could happen that you don't have to worry about here. It is very sturdy underfoot. Um, the, uh, up here, this TV antenna has the built-in Wi-Fi Ranger which in point of technicality is a, uh, an access point. It's a data signal access point. Most people don't know what that means. It's basically like having a built-in router in your camper. That's kind of the simplest way that I can describe that. And once again, where you get the vent fans in Rockwoods, you get the XL vent fans standard with the factory roof vent cover. And notice they are not afraid to go whole hog on the ceilings on these, no sir. And just a quick look at the belly here, these all have an enclosed underbelly and 12 volt tank heater standard. If I'm being picky, yeah, I'd like to see this thing maybe without carpet in the slide. I'll be surprised if they don't update to some carpetless stuff in the future. They did so much work when they got to this generation right here that I think for the next couple years, you're going to see them kind of to, to ride this build in this design and just tweak a couple little things. So if you see something you like, if you see something you'd like to be changed, please leave that feedback. We can get that relayed to the factory and you'd be surprised how much of your feedback makes a difference. Case in point. On one of our videos, a customer once said, I really wish I could get a, uh, a windshield in my Murphy bed Rockwood. Folks, your input literally truly can make the difference here sometimes. So appreciate you tuning in. And as always, remember we don't do hidden dealer fees. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy Halo camping everyone.